Hi there, my name is David. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to do the sample. It's basically a slip stitch and uh, we'll be seeing how this is made. Uh, this is from the instruction manuals of the, the brother KH230. So let's see how it works. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a cast on. Here I've selected the amount of needles that I'm going to be doing. And uh, this is basically the cast on. Um, I'm using an Erin yarn which is a, on a 5mm needle. Um, I don't know the US sizes. I must actually get a, a size chart and then figure it out. So basically you select the amount of needles that you want. And uh, this is what you do uh, for your cast on. Uh, basically, I've done eight needles by eight needles uh, because of the, the pattern instructions. And uh, I will probably be doing a number of patterns that way uh, using eight needles uh, uh, per section. And uh, here I am, I'm just uh, uh, um, inserting the yarn into the... Um, sinker plate and uh, now we're going to do the first row of knitting here I am I'm just finishing the cast on I'm just casting on here and this is how this is going to work um, I just want to say um, you know always check your yarn first um, this yarn was quite easy to work with um, I did find another yarn and it didn't seem to work so well so you know just check the yarns and see if it works with the machine um this uh um uh cast on was fairly easy and uh here i am i'm starting the 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 patterning uh it says that uh, the first section is that you uh do uh one needle by three and uh, here I am, I'm just showing you the first section of it. Uh, I measure from the side of it, so you miss, uh, for this first bit, you miss uh, three needles from the side, and then you use one needle. And then what you do is you check your uh, dials and check what you need to do. Uh, and here is, I've, I've got on number seven. Uh, here you have to put it into a slip uh, stitch uh, position. And uh, that's what you'll be doing with the first row. Um, here is the first row. As you can see, it knitted those needles. Uh, if you have a look here, you can see that it's created these long floats. Uh, that's basically your slip stitch. The difference between a slip stitch and a tuck stitch is that the loop or the float actually for a tuck stitch goes over the needle. That means it would be on, on the actual hook of the actual needle. Whereas a slip stitch actually goes behind the knitting and it creates a float on the back of the knitting. Um, it's very simple to do. The slip stitch is really interesting enough. Uh, here I am doing the second row and basically it's uh, I'm working from the, the, the left side here and uh, on the pattern it says uh, you work the first needle the second needle and then you work uh, 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 three by one and uh, this is the the second row that you're doing uh, just make sure that your um, your gauge is on correctly and that it remains on slip stitch and this is uh, where you do your uh, second needle um, with the pattern it showed on the second row that the first two needles are not uh, are not on normal knit and here is your second slip stitch that you're going to do. Um, this, uh, uh, as you can see, has the second one. This is how the pattern's working. It kind of looks like arrows. If you had to describe the pattern uh, moving in one direction, uh, I just always work from uh, left to right uh, or right to left. I just check the, the first needles or the last needles that need to be worked. Um, like I was saying, this uh, works um, eight by eight, uh, or should I say, um, uh, uh, eight by eight uh, patterning. And uh, it's uh, when you've got your count correct, you can actually add uh, all the needles that you want uh, to suit the size that you want. I actually did a lot more needles than I thought I was going to do, 
the reason being is I wanted to make sure that uh, this pattern would work well on, on the eight stitches that I was working. Here I'm doing the, another row and uh, this is the, I think the fourth row and uh, you miss the first needles and then on the left side and then you work uh, your pattern this way. Um, when you get to the fourth row I think uh, you then you, you you're changing it back and you're starting from the same position again. Um, you know I can go in detail with all these uh, bits and pieces. Uh, here I am um, I think this is the the third row uh, or the fourth row and uh, this is the continuation of the patterning uh, I think this is the third row yes I've done three rows and then I've gone on to the right hand side I'm going to be doing a fourth row and then I'll be changing the the, the direction of how the pattern works then um, um, overall, uh, I think it's really quite interesting, uh, this slip stitch way of working. Uh, here I am, I'm doing the fourth row. Uh, it said you've got to do the second stitch uh, from the right hand side. And uh, this is uh, where you move the pattern into this direction. Um, the, the, the yarn that I'm using, I, I can't remember what it is, an Erin yarn. Uh, it was actually quite smooth uh, using this yarn. Uh, it was really quite easy to do. Uh, that's the, the fourth uh, row that I'm doing. Now I'm doing a, uh, a fifth row. And this is where the direction of the pattern is going to go the other way. And this is how this works on this pattern. Um, this is very easy. Um, you don't really need to do much for this. You just need to follow the instructions and it's really quite simple on how you do this patterning. Um, I did also find a knitting book uh, for the punch cards, uh, for, um, for the, the, the uh, uh, press button machines or should I say the uh, eight button machines, the uh, patterning uh, machines. And uh, I'm actually going to look at that and see if it's possible to actually use it on this KH230 uh, brother machine. Um, because uh, the way the patterning they did in this example works on eight stitches. And, uh, you know, I just thought this would be a nice way of doing patterning. And uh, I will be having a closer look at, the, at that book. I think this is the uh the the sixth row and i think there's another two rows to go and uh that's how this will be working just make sure that uh when you uh do your knitting i've finished the the, the rows all together here i'm just uh doing uh some in between knitting between the rows and then uh i'll start the pattern again uh this was really quite simple um it's just really easy and you can see already the pattern is showing quite pronounced and uh, you know there's not much you have to do with this well this is the finished uh, sample that I've did um, on the slip stitch and it actually came out really interesting um, it actually showed quite prominently uh, what I found with this is that it tends to like single needles uh, if you do a bunch of needles together it didn't seem to work as well as pronounced so you just kind of got to look at the pattern that you're working with and uh, it seems to work better uh, with less needles um, I found this quite interesting uh, it looks like a chain stitch but uh, on the other side you can see it's just kind of normal knitting and this is the side that you would have uh, your garment on so basically you're working on the uh, the wrong side or should I say the pearl side of the actual knitting and uh, that's how it worked I, I then experiment a little bit to use a lot a lot more needles and it came out uh, the one thing I think I think I used uh, three by one uh, needles and this is how this came out um, it wasn't as pronounced as I thought it would be 
and then I just tried uh, gaps of uh, doing uh, I think it was one by three something to that effect and uh, this came out really interesting uh, with this kind of little loops here because what you can do is actually insert other yarns through here and you could actually create decorative effects on the garment and actually create something really interesting or you could actually weave in and out uh, kind of uh, loops or ribbon or something and it would create a very interesting effect um, with uh, with the sample um, I'm going to actually look at slip stitch a little bit more closely and just to see if I can create patterns with the slip stitch um, overall I think this is really interesting um, especially if it's got like menswear or if you want something really uh, uncomplicated but with a nice uh, kind of pattern on it without being uh, too much uh, overbearing with color and uh, this can work really nicely and uh, this is the sample that they've done in the instruction manuals for the KH230 brother machine and uh, uh, it's really quite simple um, would I do this again yes I will and I will be looking at uh, seeing what I can do with the slip stitch anyway uh, this is the end of the video and uh, I hope you uh, liked uh, the sample and uh, I will be doing the next video soon and I still have to I think I've got one more project with this machine and so I will be seeing you soon uh, please uh, subscribe and leave a comment and uh, I will see you in the next video mm -hmm.